how was your week? How's it going? What's it up? It was good. It's okay. Good. That's all? <laughs> yeah, that's all. Nothing good happened? Um, Nothing weird happened? Nothing too weird. Filled out my basketball bracket. Okay. So that's exciting. This is Polly Muse. It's a podcast with myself, Ben, and my cousin, Michael. Hi, I'm Michael. This I'm is Michael. a podcast. Welcome. We call it Polly Muse. We call it Polly Muse. That's what we call it. And you call it Polly Muse. Yes, I do. It came to Michael here in a dream when he named the podcast. Tell us about that, Michael. Uh, it was a daydream. And <laughs> and uh, I think I Googled something like music words, and somehow I came to this. And there you go. And today on Polly Muse, the podcast brought to you on all the fine, finest platforms around, Spotify, iTunes, uh, all of the other platforms as well. We're going through the Linkin Park discography. We have reached a side project, a fork in the road. We decided to cover the major side projects of at least Mike Shinoda and Chester. I don't know the other members of the band have too many side projects, but uh, both of these guys just write so much music uh, and sing so much music that we got to do their side projects. So we're doing the album Out of Ashes by the band Dead by Sunrise. A real cheerful title there. Very downer titles. So this was one of the other major projects besides Fort Minor. Fort Minor. This was Chester's. Which we covered earlier. Yep. Yeah, this was Chester's side piece here. Uh, so Mike Medi- had his side piece. Yep. Yeah, so we this need is Chester's side piece. That's right. So Meteora was released in 2003 by Lincoln Park, followed up by Minutes to Midnight in 07. So that was the huge gap. We had Out of Ashes here released in 2009, Mm -hmm. and then A Thousand Suns came out in 2010 by Linkin Park. So this was in between Minutes to Midnight in 07 and A Thousand Suns in 2010. That makes sense. Yep. It was recorded in 2005. Well, started in 2005. Let me get that right. Started in 2005, right after they were touring for Meteora, and they were taking a little break from the tour. They had some label issues and they were taking just a little break there again we had the break from 03 to 07 with meteora and minutes to midnight chester was getting through his first divorce at this time his only divorce his first marriage and divorce at this time Mm -hmm. and he wasn't really thinking about writing at this point he was having a, a rough patch and ended up doing some some writing and linking up with his good friend Ryan Shuck back from Orgy, another band here, and he decided to play some pieces he'd been working on for Ryan. Ryan really liked it. They started collaborating on some stuff. Let Down that we see on this album was one of the tracks where Ryan's like, hey, we got to put something together here. We've got to work on this album. And it was first introduced as a Chester solo project before they came around to the name Dead by Sunrise. The band was first called Snow White Tan at first. Mm -hmm. And they first appeared for a charity concert post-Hurricane Katrina in 2005 in Nashville, Tennessee. Very cool. Yep. And that was in 2005 as well. So years before the actual full project was released. So they do kind of operate as a band. It's obviously like a a Chester songwriting vehicle, but the other guys do contribute to the songwriting and play some stuff. We're going to list them off really quick. We got Chester Bennington, lead vocals, Amir Darak on lead guitar, Ryan Shuck, rhythm guitar and backing vocals, Elias Andra, drums and percussion, who was replaced by Frank Zummo on drums, uh, Brandon Velsky on bass. You got Anthony Fu Valkik, Valsik on keyboards and synth. Those uh, sounds like pretty much a stable lineup of guys. They did get together, you know, throughout the years and play live shows. They would do sets in the middle of Linkin Park sets. Linkin Park would take a break, and then Dead by Sunrise would do stuff. They have done stuff uh, as a tribute to Chester after Chester has died. So um, it's not just random collaborators that make a Chester solo album. It is kind of just a second band that Chester sings with and writes with. And just wanted to kind of point that out, kind of how it all works out and how they operate. So once they they did come together there in 2005, it was shelved when Linkin Park did start to work on Minutes to Midnight. 
And in 2008, I think they finally went to the studio there and, and really put it together and released in 2009. Chester, through various interviews, revealed that he really enjoyed the writing process when writing for Linkin Park. It was obviously a collaboration between him and Mike, and he really enjoyed that he could talk about his experiences specifically in these tracks, and that really comes through. This album did not chart super high. A lot nah. of folks hadn't heard about it. Neither of us had listened to this project nope. before. 2009 was not a good year for rock. Rap and hip-hop and pop had all... That was that whole string of years there, like 2000 to five to 2009 mm -hmm. not good years for rock music yeah uh 29th was the highest it went on billboards 200 we did have three singles three music videos just not a overall not a big charting project overall but it's pretty cool yeah it was enjoyable did you enjoy your re-listen or your first listen for the podcast i, I did like it obviously he has a lot of influences and i think he enjoyed you know there's various quotes where he I think sometimes went for pulling from different areas and enjoyed some of the more yeah, he simplistic just steals views riffs. of things. Yeah, Some and, of them are just riffs from other songs. We'll get to it. Yeah, and I think that was something he didn't mind on this project. Without yeah. all the experimentation that Linkin Park did, I think that was something that was the point of this project. It's just very much different than a Linkin Park album, a little bit more simplistic, everything from his point of view on the writing side, and I think that's something that was very much enjoyed by Chester in putting this project together. Did you enjoy it? I did. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I was afraid that it would be all kind of the same or like like super metally in a bad way or just like really kind of generic. None of that's true. He experiments a lot. I mean, experiments as in does different styles of rock, basically. Yep. He goes all over the place, like ba uh, all kinds of different subgenres and influences that he's right lincoln park didn't have most of these as part of their repertoire as many sounds as lincoln park blends together these are like some other different styles of rock and classic rock and stuff like that that lincoln park didn't really delve into as much yep uh we should mention real quick that the rising tide did come out in 2005 for That's, fort minor yeah fort minor yes, so that, that came out, out in earlier. between Meteora and Minutes. Yep. This came out between Minutes and The Sun. Yep. The Rising Sun. Thousand Suns. Thousand Suns. There we go. All the suns. There we go. I like that one a lot. We'll get to that one. But this one. Dead by Sunrise here. So I thought it was cool that it's a, it's a bunch of different styles of like alternative rock as well. And like sounds that were big in the 90s that are no longer really in the forefront of music at this time and they were definitely not in 2009 stuff that i love and grew up with he gets into alternative rock and grunge and 90s styles of music uh really enjoyed all that kind of stuff some of the lyrics on this are bad like bad you know what i mean it's yeah not difficult writing it's like some of it's so i was thinking about this and i was thinking well you know hip-hop music 16 bars and yeah. I was going through the lyrics of this. And I'm like, I think there are multiple songs that don't have 16 bars. There's yeah, not I'm 16. Sure. <laughs> like, there's some of it just repeats the same. Yeah. Chorus, like, verse, I no lie. bridge, just I over and over. Yeah. Yeah. We got some simple writing here. You and I could sing it out in like 30 seconds and be like, yeah, it's this thing. It's this piece repeated over and over. Like, this is, yeah. yeah. Multiple songs like that. Multiple songs. It's just like, we got like four lines here, folks. That's. Which is, I mean, neither here nor there, if it's yeah. done right. It's just not complicated lyrically. <laughs> right. And we'll address it. I mean, like, I love the band The Ramones. And they're simple. It's simple stuff. It's simple riffs and simple lyrics and simple concepts. But it's so good and so, like, lovingly put together and just crafted as, like, a package of, like, pop rock it's just really really good really really simple rock music and it's like the best version of that chester there's a bunch of ramones references on this chester was definitely influenced by that kind of an idea where he's trying to keep it as simple as possible but i just think some of it doesn't work it's not like there is simple and good but this is simple and bad some of it simple and boring yeah <laughs> I'm just talking lyrically, and it's not every song, but there are multiple on here. So, so a, as we rank the songs, 
we're going to give them a, a lyric rating of either good or bad. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we're going to do our normal tier ranking, like S through, through F, and S being the one we would put on a mixtape for the time capsule. We're, so then, then we'll do the lyric rating, and then we should also decide whether or not this song would have ever worked as a Linkin Park song. Yeah. And just mention that as we do the ranking. I want him to experiment. So it's like if it would never work as a Linkin Park song, and which I'll mean like experimental, like him doing a different genre, I'm going to rank it kind of high, even if it sucks. Stuff that could have worked as Linkin Park and sucks, I'm going to rank super low. And then stuff that could have ranked, could have been on Linkin Park and is decent, I guess I'll just give a medium. But he gets, even if it's not good, he gets extra points for being a different style is what i'm saying and he'll lose points if it's too similar to lincoln park yes there we go so here we go so let's do the ranking all right so first off here we have fire fire it was one of the singles off the album as one of the three singles it does have a music video okay. all three singles have music videos none of them are very exciting yeah so it's not worth Going back and looking at those, it's not even that they're dated. They're just visually unexciting. It's the band and diff with different shapes or colors or just whatever. Some are, I don't think, live performances, staged, perform staged performances. Yeah. Just none of them are exciting at all. Gotcha. So you can skip all the music videos. Song, fire, kind of good, kind of weird. There's a lot of influences in here, and I don't know if it all really fits together. It is more a beat. It's a beat. It's like a heavy breakdown beat. There's like really twinkly guitar, really heavy breakdown drums, heavy synth, heavy guitar. It's like a choir of Chester, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's just track about always having someone with you. No need to hear your voice or see your face to know that you are with me. No need to kiss your lips or hold your hand to know that you can feel me. I know that you can feel me. And it's, so it's just more a beat, has a lot of influences, would fit right in with a, not a pop punk, but a, what genre would you say? It's like some kind of indie rock or alt rock. I'm not sure exactly what he's pulling from. It kind of sounds like Angels and Airwaves, honestly. Ooh. But I know there's better analogs than that, just for a band that we are kind of familiar with. For an album that was said to be very dark. Yeah. This is not... There are a lot of light songs on here. Very happy. This is a very happy song. It comes across very happy. You can sing along with it. We've got Chester harmonizing with himself in the vocals and, like you said, some of the chorus. Yeah, then the bridge is even more of a breakdown somehow, like super alt-rock influenced, just kind of really pounding, almost like a power ballad because it never really changes. It's just kind of straight ahead. Like, But uh, I think it's a cool track. I think uh, lyric ranking, good or bad, good. I think uh, would it work on a Linkin Park album? Yes, which makes it lose points. I think it is pretty generic for as many things as you tried to throw in here. It's just this kind of a white noise wall of sound and doesn't really grab you. And I have to give it a C-. It could work as a Linkin Park song, especially on Minutes to Midnight. Some of the stuff they're releasing around this time, which was not as, I guess, exper I guess, I don't want to say experimental, but it sounds like it's a little bit more mainstream. Yeah. It's more poppy. It's yeah. less metal. That's what I would say. Not that that's bad. I mean, we loved Minutes to Midnight. We just had so much going on in Hybrid Theory. Yeah. Reanimation was something different. And then Meteora had its, had its own vibe. And this just sounds like something more you'd hear in between songs on the radio that's quote-unquote normal, I think. So, and yeah. this song would have been the worst song on Minutes to Midnight if they had left it. Because we didn't really make clear. Some of this stuff, it was like they were doing Minutes to Midnight with Rick Rubin. And he just kept, they just kept writing songs and songs, song after song. So this is like stuff from earlier in Chester's life, stuff he wrote with this band, but also... Like ideas and songs that came out of all the leftover Minutes to Midnight stuff. If this was on Minutes to Midnight, it'd be the worst song. Yeah. So I'd give it a I'd give it a B minus. Lyrically, thumbs up. Good. Definitely one of the better tracks on here. Something you could sing along with a little bit. We get one little kind of scream in here. We don't get a lot of screaming or anything on this this album. 
It's mostly singing, not a whole lot of Chester screams. So, but yeah, uh, B minus. B minus. Good on the lyrics. Yeah, not great or amazing or and, important. Yeah. It just good or bad. They're fine. They should be fine or bad. <laughs> they're fine. So our second track is "Crawl Back In." Another one of the singles from the album. It's very blatantly a Nirvana ripoff. It is like the exact tone and beat and riff that uh, I, it's not a specific Nirvana song, but it's like that's exactly what he's going for. It is the same chord progression as Strength to Endure by the Ramones. You can sing Strength to Endure to this. It's the same riff, I'm pretty sure, or close enough. What do you think about Crawl Back In? Well, it's kind of about losing your identity or trying not to be like everyone else and not losing your innocence, kind of trying to be yourself and not be like everyone else. But yeah, just a a driving kind of punk rock, much different style than the first track. Yeah, way different. Uh, But simple, simple writing, not a whole lot here. Terrible writing. Lyrics ranking, bad. (laughs) Thumbs down. On the lyrics. He rhymes cry, lie, and die on the bridge. F minus on the lyrics. Yeah, it's just not not a whole lot to the to the verses. Just I don't not a lot of here lot here lyrically. Instrumentally sounds like a lot of other stuff. Boring music video, like we said. I just not The riff basically never changes. It repeats for the chorus and the verse, and then the bridge is like a slow breakdown version of the same riff. One of, if not my least favorite songs on that album. This is like a D. I gave it a D. I was going to give it an F, but there is a guitar solo as well as a bridge. And the guitar solo is kind of awesome. So it gets a D instead of an F. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's get out of here. I don't like this one. Okay. Uh, so Nirvana t- did it better 30 times or 50 times. Yes. There's no reason. Yeah. Too late is the third track on the album. Would this work as a Linkin Park song? Yes. I said no, but let's talk about it. Do you like this song? There's nothing here lyrically. Not really. Yeah. A couple short verses, a chorus that's repeated between the two verses, and then like three or four times at the end. Starts with like a really shuffly hi-hat beat and a synth part. Some A bunch of really cool guitars come in. Then it gets to the chorus, which I like. It's heavy. It's catchy. The chorus is good. That's the highlight. If you can sing with the chorus, then it's not a loss, right? It's too late to turn back now. It's too late to hear a sound. I'm so lost. I can't be found. It's too late to turn back now. I should have sang the chorus because that... So bad? <laughs> Lyric ranking bad? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, that ain't great. I like the electronic stuff in the pre-verses and pre-choruses. They do very kind of almost Linkin Park sounding stuff, even though I said it wouldn't work on Linkin Park. I don't know if, is this something where you actually, do you write this first and then come up with the instrumentation like you do for everything else? Or do you, because this is a chorus. This is all it is. It's a chorus. It's It's a a catchy chorus. chorus. The verses don't matter. No. I don't think the bridge matters either. I can't no. really remember it off the top of my head, but it sounds almost country in the second verse. They got like a twangy guitar, but yeah, there's really nothing here. It's they didn't. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, do you write two lines? You're like, this is catchy, and then you write a, this little guitar part, and you're like, okay, we'll just build around this, and then you slap it together, and then that's all you have is this catchy verse, your guitars. Yeah. I mean, what else are we working with? I gave it. I wrote down a B, but I got to give it worse than a B. <laughs> I got to go C minus again. I talked you out of that. I talked you down. Some of these are too high. I'm going C minus. Bad lyrics. Uh, let's go ahead and change our mind. Yes, it could work on Linkin Park. It's the worst power ballad on Minutes to Midnight. Yeah, I'll give it a C. I still think it could work as a Linkin Park song, especially if they did a few. I feel like if they did a few things to it, it could be a Linkin Park song. But yeah, a C. This is a C. If I can flip it on or it rolls through my playlist and I'm listening to just the chorus, which is repeated multiple times, yeah. then then I guess it's not a complete loss, but it's nothing I'm happily thrown on. Then we get track four, Inside of Me. It's very pop punk sounding, 
really bad lyrics, a really good, really tight, really good pop punk song, uh, but it's very generic. Kind of about being trapped inside your head, being locked away. But again, the writing is simple. There's yes. not a lot to it. Yes. Sounds like a million other bands. It's very anthemy. It is. Gets points back for being an anthem. I feel alone. Uh, oh, jeez. I feel all alone every day and just so far away. I know something's got to change inside of me. It's just too obvious of a genre thing where it's like it's just too much pop punk and not anything else or even like experimental or different or new at all. I just I could have picked, I don't know, story of the year or. They, yeah. I wouldn't say Papa Roach but because of the uniqueness of the lead singer's voice there. But, well, maybe because they do a lot of anthem type stuff. So if you slap Papa Roach's singer in here, you'd be like, okay, this sounds like a Papa Roach song. So, Some 41, Good yeah. Charlotte, any of the really, really polished ones. Obviously, there's a lot of more underground pop punk, but it's like you were on the right track. Story of the year. He gets into stuff later on that's really up the alley of like Jimmy E. World and All American Rejects mm -hmm. and Reliant K, kind of that style of indie rock. This is not that, but no. like there's that's another influence later on in the record as well. Yeah, I don't even know exactly. I mean, this Papa Roach isn't punk either. That's a little out of pocket, but with, with some of the style, it's like Radio Rocky. It. Yeah, it might not yeah, even it's just, be. It's somewhere on the line there. Yeah. So it's somewhere on that line. Butt rock. Or pop punk of that line. I was going to say, it's like, what's that other band? Like, not Breaking Benjamin, but... Uh, Three Days Grace? Yeah, a little bit like them. They do a, a lot of that Anthony bit. stuff. Yeah. That sing along the chorus with me like you're screaming, put your hands up, you can... So it's like a super generic combo of radio rock and pop punk. I wrote down C. All of these are too high. I'm, gonna, I'm cutting them all in half. This was a D. Ooh. I, you know... This would be a C for me. The lyrics are another thumbs down. I'm it's just Bad. It's not good. Not a Lincoln Park song. No, not at all. Just not just a forgettable track. Uh, so we move to Let Down next, which describes how we feel up to this point in the album, really. This was a also a single. Had okay. To th had to think about that for a minute. You I know, gave we, it a decent -er score, so that makes sense. Yeah. We talk about how all the singles are usually packed in the front. And here we have tracks one, two, and four. So there singles. you go. Yeah. Yeah. It holds up to my theory on how to build a correct album where you've got your the singles and hits up front and then more experimental, more weird stuff on the second half for the fans. Album is definitely like that. I end up liking side B way more. We'll get to that. This was the first big track that Chester wrote um, for Ryan and said, you know, this is one of the things I'm working on that kind of sparked, hey, we're going to, we should build a project around this. The chorus is great. So that makes sense. This is the standout song. Okay. Uh, you going for that? I think so. Highest song? Is it your highest score? It's my highest score. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let down to be, I mean, the subject matters to, to be let down more or less. Yeah. I don't know that I consider it a super special song. Uh, lyrically, it's better than a lot of tracks yeah. on here. Oh, yeah. It's I got a it catchy a good, chorus. A good lyrics. Said, I don't want to be let down. I don't want to live that life again. That part's awesome. I don't want to live that life again. Rip off of a Ramones lyric from the song Pet Cemetery, where he says, I don't want to live my life again. Very similar. I don't know if he purposely did it or sub. I think he subconsciously did it. But that's who that's where it's from. Yep. And it's a great lyric. And they so yeah, good lyrics. I give it a B overall. Yeah, I, I like the oh the winter and spring going hand in hand, just like my love and pain. So we have some some kind of nice lyrics here. Nicer than other pieces, like we said. So the lyrics are good, it's catchy, the instrumental is fine. It's like heavy synths and drum machines. Very Linkin Park sounding. Yeah. I think this is... Violins in there. You know, and saying this is the best... Uh, there are a lot of fine tracks on here, but this is still like a, a B plus. This is still a B plus for me. Okay. 
Yeah, this is not like an A project. We're not. I'm not running running a lot of A's here. I'm gonna reveal right now that I have given way higher than a B later on. I like the side B of this album a lot. I, I do as well. There's some good. There's some way better stuff coming up. I think. And that was the last song. There's 12 tracks. That was track five. So here we go with side B, track six. Give me your name. Not a Linkin Park song. It's a starts as like an acoustic ballad with like a slide lead guitar going over an acoustic guitar. Uh, really weird lyrics. So, as we stated, Chester was getting going through his divorce. Okay. Throughout this writing process. Uh, so this is more or less probably a love song to his. Well, he'd met his second wife before he was fully divorced from his first. So during this 2005, he got divorced, but he'd met his second wife in 2004, just previous to, hang on, let me back this, back this up. 2004, Chester had met his second wife, Okay. got divorced in 2005, and then got remarried in 2006. So this song was, I'm sure, about his second wife. Okay. And how she's making it easier through some of the pain and hard time he's going through here between probably the divorce falling back in love some of the album dispute with his with the label and stuff like that so i'm sure this is about falling in love with his second wife and how she makes it easier through all the pain and and struggle this is not a bad power ballad it's, it's not. a good power ballad the chorus Love is a ballad. lot different. Yeah, they do so many, man. I don't know if Rick Rubin told them, like, look, guys, you know what you need? <laughs> About 60 power ballads. Yeah. So, yeah, like I already said, the verses are, like, acoustic and kind of, like, dusty, folky sounding. The chorus is, like, super pretty, like, weird, like, angelic harmonies, like, the kind of stuff you hear, I don't even know, like, more electronic music or something where there's just a weird effect on his voice almost on the choruses. I just noticed a double meaning in the title. Give me your name as in like, what's your name, girl? Give me your name. But also like when you get married, the girl gives you her name. There you go. So it's a double meaning. Yep. So that's cool. I didn't realize that on the first listen. Yeah, I, I kind of envision this. It's very kind of wispy and cloudy, falling in love and heavenly. This kind of has that that feel and that tone. But only on the choruses. It goes like back and forth. Yes, it does toggle back and forth. What do you rank a song like that? Like a B minus? All right. I don't, it's not something that I'm like replaying a lot. Yeah. I think it's actually kind of weird. It's totally weird. <laughs> That's what I wrote. The lyrics are weird. <laughs> it's not bad or good. Weird. It's another third category. Of the lyric score. Yeah. I, even weird for him. He doesn't usually talk about it. It's, even, it's weird for a love song. Maybe that's what it is. He's a weirdo, and he wrote. He tried to write a normal love song. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know that it's um stylistically enough to be like a love song. Yeah. But lyrically, it's very almost lovey-dovey, so it doesn't fit what it's doing instrumentally. Ah, just, I don't know. It's very strange to me. <laughs> I gave it a B. That's solid. And That's I'll kind. leave it at a B. I'm not going to kneecap it like I'm doing to some of these as I re-listen. What do you think of it lyrically? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Yeah, I gave it a thumbs weird, remember? It's not good or bad. Okay. I just want to make sure a thumbs weird. <laughs> All right. Let's do the next song, My Suffering by Dead by Sunrise. That's, Track seven on their album, Out cool. of Ashes, brought to you. By Polly Muse, the Lincoln Park podcast. Yeah. What do you think of my suffering? Well, that's quite a turn from the last track there. <laughs> this is very similar to Green Day. Also, their the Green Day side project, The Network. This just sounds like something that Green Day would have written or The Network would have done, like just straight up that kind of riff, that kind of effect, that kind of lyrics, that kind of drumming, that kind of writing. Not bad. It's no. Got, yeah. I, I, it's, it's not a Linkin Park song, I don't not think. Not at all. Yeah. The drumming's good. They get into like a double time beat on the chorus. It's kind of catchy. Uh, he does a call and repeat thing with himself. There is a little bit of screaming. 
in the bridge it gets into like almost a new wave like 70s rock kind of synthesizer thing that fits really well with the the green day new wave network style stuff i think it's good song which you, is why i gave it a c who you kiss away all of my pain you wash away these bloody stains you are to blame my suffering my 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 suffering so much darker tone here suffering not great. thoughts that are wearing him down uh knows that he has to kind of deal with them i don't know i mean more vivid writing here yeah. something crazy running wild inside my brain so okay. the lyrics i That's guess i give a thumbs up here all right i don't know again just influences of a lot of other stuff so influences from a lot of things that sounds like everything else and i uh, just a c minus i'm not a fan of this really oh uh, okay lyrics are fine but i'm not I'm not going to give them a good. I'm going to give them a bad. If those are my choices, I don't I can't get, say they're good. <laughs> they're not even fine. They're worse than fine. Not great. Not a great song. Okay. Next up, we got Condemned. There we go. Track 8, Condemned. I love this song. Just again, a completely different style. Very grungy, very alternative rock, very 90s rock. It sounds really similar to like it made me think of Veruca Salt, that band, but he's singing it like he's Marilyn Manson. He's he's doing like that style of scratchy vocal rip off type very thing. Very much so, yeah. Um, very much influenced by that. And again, a call and response. Again, he does it with just himself. It's him doing the call and the response. He doesn't have Mike there. Cra- Use me as a chemical. Crazy I'm lyrics, yeah. <laughs> Love me like a suicide. Commit. Treat me like an animal. I like it. Put me on my leash again, your pet. Crazy lyrics. Lyrics up, lyrics down. You like this? Good, good. They're good. Vivid imagery. I like the call and response. Very aggressive. I think this is one where he wears his influence on his sleeve, but he takes it to the next level, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to tell who they're influenced by but then you take it up a notch you take it to the next level you do your own thing i think this is the one where he really does that and i'm gonna give it an a plus I, I really like it i think the lyrics the the riff the whole thing this is like him nailing the concept of his 90s alt rock idea i give this a b plus i like it it's good uh i like the lyrics i like the the style for all the reasons that you stated this is a good song. It's a good track, something you'd throw throw on, fit in a playlist. Yeah. This is one of the, the hand, not even a handful of songs, I think, on this album you pull up and re-listen to. Mm-hmm. Into You is track nine, and we dial it in a different direction here again. The beginning sounds a lot like the exact same atmosphere as that song Runaway. It was like paper bags and angry That's voices. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. It's like the same intro almost. It's not the same music, but it's like that exact same atmosphere. It's probably like in the same key and everything too, but yeah. So that's, I, it's cool though. Yeah. That's probably exactly why it triggers that thought and much like, run away it, it has some of the imagery in the lyrics smoke another cigarette it kills the pain that's all that's left of me anymore choke on all my regrets feeling the strain and every breath stumble as i crawl so what's it about someone who's in conflict falling into someone it's another double meaning into uh, yeah. you as in like girl i'm into you or as in like <laughs> like into you like inside of you like fall into you is what he says in the chorus yeah so again going through struggle i'm a man with tragedies have been replaced with memories tattooed upon my soul which is a nice yeah that's good nice line so lyrics good lyrics good and having someone there similar to uh one of the previous tracks that we looked at so then the not, bridge, not a totally different topic there no then the bridge is like straight up like 2000s rock maybe the most they sound like lincoln park on the whole record this one is definitely would have worked on Lincoln Park. Oh, yeah. Might have actually done good on Minutes to Midnight. Not not the bottom of the barrel on there. That would have been a good song on Minutes to Midnight. Oh, yeah. It probably could have punched it up a little bit, too, as well, if it was Lincoln Park's song. Could so have I been gave it a B plus. Very successful. B plus is solid. Yeah, I'd go B plus as well. We go from Into It Track 9 to End of the World. 
in track 10. Uh, I think this song sucks. Oh, that's awesome because I think it is not good either. Oh, good. It's one of our uh, we agree kind of anti-political, I guess, world issues kind of tracks, but it's also very about? vague. Yeah, that's my problem with it. <laughs> not sure what we're, what we're anti. It's just vaguely political, current eventy. Uh, like, yeah, it's like, what are you saying though, dude? When you turn on the TV, what do you get? Sex, lie, scandal, violence. Okay. Like the end of a gun pressed against your lips. Okay. Yeah. It's just generic. He's not making a point. It's just silly. Yeah. I, I think the same thing. Lyrics bad. So, yeah. Linkin Park, no. Yeah. I mean, I could see a number of other groups performing this. I think this is in the genre of like a Papa Roach yeah. or a Seether or a, maybe not even that. I just the lyrics are so bland. They're yeah. so bland. They're so boring. Who is he mad at? What's he really saying? Nothing. It's just garbage. Yeah. Like write it. If you're mad, write it. Figure it out. Like explain it. Is he mad at your television? All right. He's mad so, at TV. Yeah. Okay. Lyrics bad. Instrumentation boring. You got any big notes on what's going on instrumentally? I don't know. There's some good guitars. There's some good radio screeching noises at one point. That's pretty cool at the end. It's just really pandering and bad. I gave it a D. I give it an F. All right. <laughs> we'll just F, F it out. Might be the, really? <laughs> yeah. That I, might be the first F of the podcast. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. D for don't listen. Do not. Track 11 also gets a D. Walking in circles. <laughs> <laughs> so this could be trying to do something or solve something, but you always end up in the same place, doing things over and over again. You know, you're suffering, but people don't really know. It's a cycle. Could be a lot of things here far as meaning you know everyone's blind to what's going on with their neighbor but yeah well, a lot of things could be interpreted out of this song alone in a world with millions of souls walking in circles walking in circles trapped in their dreams unhealthy unclean walking in circles now do not disturb scream in silence everyone's sleeping which is what you could do instead of listening, instead of listening to, to this, this track. track i said this in the last one were d's but they might as well be f's it's so generic. What is he writing about? It's so stupid. Like, don't you want to be one of millions of souls walking in circles? Like, wow, dude, you're really. It's not deep. Like, and I don't. He he knows it's not. He knows. It is very simple. But again, I think that was one of the concepts of the album. Doesn't mean it makes a good song though. It's just a dumb concept. It's like, yeah, wow, yeah. He, should, he the, didn't write the concept. It's like, explain yeah. who you're criticizing. like, Or use some words that pop out, some better adjectives. Give me something. It's very bland. Very bland. It's like, you all suck. It's just that kind of song. It's generic. And they had to try a 3-4 song. It's like a waltz or whatever. Had to try it. They had to try every style, but holy crap. And that comes through. It does give it a little bit different sound but i don't know they could have done they could have worked a lot of different things into here it almost could have given it a more creepier tone or an eerier tone anything instrumentally or lyrically or they could have punched it up in a million different directions but this is another very bland song lyrics no thank you I mean, it's not the worst but it's not it's not great we're bad lyrics bad song Let's end on a good song, In the Darkness. Pretty cool. Starts with an acoustic guitar and like a sample of a guy doing like a bass drum thing. It's just with his throat like, mm. Mm. but they use it as an instrument. There's like a synth in here, like really pretty, like weird synth. But then it, it eventually becomes like a pop metal song. It's like a progressive song where it just keeps building and building and building and getting more crazy. And uh, that's what you got to have for like a finale. I think it's a good song. I think these are the the kind of tracks that really peak your ear, peak your ear, peak your ear <laughs> when you're listening, whether it's on the radio, whether it be live at a concert, to with the building aspect obviously. The lyrics pull you in. This is the kind of thing I love. I want to cut through my skin and pull you within. My heart burns like the sun as our flesh becomes one. It doesn't necessarily have to be you know, kind of graphic like that, but it certainly gets you, certainly pops. Our chorus, in the dark, all that you want from me is all that I have to give. In the darkness, coming so easily, learning how to live. So not anything particularly special there, but the singing is pretty nice. 
and we kind of build up to the the bridge and the chorus first time around first time we hit the chorus it's a nice build so it's not the worst thing ever no i gave it a c yeah that's where i would i'd put it i'd say lyrics yes i like it lyrically mm-hmm. i like the build they could they could do a lot more with this he says just, in the darkness a lot it's about the darkness it's about his girlfriend or whatever yeah not not really deep but decent uh, just, yeah i think it's a good outro to the album though it fits i think it fits as well uh, just uh, just boring it's boring yeah i like the build and we hit a certain plateau mm-hmm. and then it progresses yeah but we kind of die off like 45 seconds in yeah <laughs> and then we just sit there and we hang in out in the darkness we don't drop back down we don't go back up we're just chilling at this very meh level in the darkness yeah sees good all Lyrics, right okay we do have one more song we do Secret song. Morning After uh, was released on the... Je- Whoa, baby. It was released on the <laughs> Japanese edition. <laughs> and the, it was an iTunes bonus track as well. <laughs> and it's just kind of a driving, chugging... I think it's awesome. Jam. It's like industrial music. It starts and it's like heavy industrial metal, but really good, really tight, really just like edgy and cutting. Cor- the vocals are great. The guitars are great. It pops in like 30 seconds in with the chorus, and the chorus is really good. Uh, it sounds like stu- it sounds like 2000s era metal, like in a really good way. Not sure exactly who he's ripping off. The bridge is quite a bit less heavy with like a synthesizer thing. There's a synth solo. It, it's like a crazy... I'm not even sure if it's, if it's a synth or a guitar, but there's a really good solo in this. And it's just a really tight, really good like pop industrial metal song. I think it's great. I gave it a B plus. It's got a chorus you can sing with. Lyrics good. Lyrics good. It's a nice nice something you can bop to. I give it a C uh B minus. Okay. I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know what? You talked to me. I'm gonna give it a B. How okay. about that? I believe I gave three B pluses on the album. So this could be like my four. There's only like maybe five tracks up here I'd pull up. Yeah. It's not. It's half good. There we go. Half good. And half crap. Yeah. So that's better than I thought it was going to (laughs) be. I mean, the stuff that's good is good. And the stuff that's crap, at least he's trying some stuff most of the time. Yeah. Well, for what he needed at the time, just uh, something different. Side project from his perspective, writing about what he wanted to write about. Without, um, you know, having to to work with Mike, I think that's exactly what he needed. So, yeah, it's a really good victory lap. It's super cool. I think it it's a good album all around. It deserves to exist. Like, it's not a crappy album at all. Like, it's a good try, a good, like, he wrote really good set of songs and recorded them really well. And it's a good, it's cool that they both got to do, like, a victory lap side project where they're like, look how many songs we can write. We can just you know mix it up any way we want yeah uh they did try to bring the band back but it just never really materialized so this is the only project that we will get of course from dead by sunrise unfortunately there's a quote from chester when this came out he was saying he wanted to do more dead by sunrise like in between lincoln park albums he wanted to continue to do like in between side chapters of out of at or of uh dead by sunrise but never that will not happen chester rest in peace i think about him all the time man i miss chester a lot good album by him very it's cool that he want he got to do all this stuff and do it on such a big stage like that and branch out into a lot of different artists and really just put his heart into an album like this it is a lot of different styles again it's not the same thing or couple different styles all the way through. Mm -hmm. It is quite a change up. You do see a lot of different influences and a lot of different pieces. So it is an interesting project that we were able to go back and listen through here. I would suggest other folks do the same. And if like us, you find a couple that are worth, worth, worth re listening to. Yeah. That's cool. I'd say definitely check it out. 
if you are into Minutes to Midnight or A Thousand Suns or any of these Lincoln Parks, this fits right in. Decent all around. Decent. Let's not go crazy. But yeah, decent is where I draw the line. <laughs> it's decent. It's decent. If this, you know, it's, <laughs> it's decent. This is decent. All right, what else? What do we got? What can we say about... Let's just close the book on Dead by Sunrise. I think we might have said everything about them. We're out of ashes. We're out of ashes, guys. We're so out of ashes. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, guys. We here at Poly Muse, we love you a lot. We love doing this. We're going to keep doing this. We're going to do more albums of Linkin Park. We're going to do getting back into Linkin Park next time. That's what we're doing. All right? And we're going to... A thousand suns. We're gonna do. We gotta do a decade underground, the compilation album of all their underground albums. I think that should be done on the podcast for sure. This is kind of the when they made some of those tracks mainstream, basically brought them up to a wider audience, and it's a really cool compilation album. Uh, Ten more track reviews coming your way next week, going through all the Lincoln Parks, and then after that episode will be a thousand suns phenomenal album so you'll have that to look forward to as well we'll see you soon check us out on all the social medias